Hey y'all, Leela here with Miss Kiss Creations. Welcome back to my channel. Today's Tumblr tutorial, I'm going to show you how I created this beginner's candy cane tumbler. Like always, all of my materials will be listed in my description below, including some direct links and coupon codes. And don't forget that you can find me on all of my socials, TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. With all that being said, let's go ahead and get started with this tutorial. I'm starting with a prepped 20 ounce skinny stainless steel tumbler from Makerflow Crafts. I am using 20 milliliters of epoxy to start on this tumbler once that spray paint is dry. I am adding Diamonds 3.0 from Glitter Heart Co. and to my 20 milliliters of epoxy. And I'm making sure to stir that completely until it's like one consistent color. Add as much or as little glitter as you like. And then I am adding some mica powder, Wishful from Glitter Heart Co. Mica powder is basically a shimmer. It's not much like glitter, but I like to compare it to a very sparkly eyeshadow. I add some of that into my epoxy as well. And make sure you are adding these additives to your epoxy once your epoxy has been mixed. So mix that part A and part B, and then add your glitter and mica powders. And then we're going to apply that epoxy mixture all around the tumbler. And again, I am adding a total of 20 milliliters of epoxy. That's 10 milliliters part A and 10 milliliters part B. If you don't have mica powder on hand, don't worry. You can always just add glitter. Or if you don't want a sparkly tumbler, you can always just skip this part and go right into taping off your tumbler. But I wanted a nice sparkly tumbler because y'all know I absolutely love glitter. So do whichever way you like. I am using my facet epoxy for this, so this took about five hours to dry to the touch. So let your tumblers epoxy cure. Once your epoxy is cured, we'll go ahead and move on to the next step. And now that my epoxy is cured, I'm going to go in with an X-Acto knife and I'm going to cut the rim of the tumbler. I'm cutting any excess epoxy that may have dried on the rim. I do this after every step of my epoxy process. So anytime I epoxy, I always cut the rim just to make that final cleanup process a little easier. Once I finish cutting the rim, I'm going to go in with a 220 grit sanding block just to sand away any of those little stubborn pieces of glitter that may be peeking through that epoxy. And make sure you are sanding lightly because you don't wanna sand away any of the glitter. Once I finish sanding with a 220 grit sanding block, I'm going to take my 180 grit sanding block and I'm going to sand on the rim of the tumbler. I'm sanding the smallest bits of the top of the tumbler so the tiniest bit of stainless steel can be exposed so we can get that nice seal at the end when we're finished epoxy in this tumbler. When I'm finished with that, I'm going to wipe down my tumbler with 91% alcohol to remove any excess oils or sanding dust that may have been placed on my tumbler. And now moving on to making those swirls onto the candy canes, or I guess the candy cane swirls onto the tumbler, I am measuring around my tumbler first and I am using two sizes of tape, 1.5 inch and then one inch. Y'all are going to see that I should have just used one size tape because I realized that my tumbler measured about nine and a half inches in diameter. And instead of doing the difficult math, I should have just used one size because at the end, this tumbler has one size swirls. <laughs> so do whichever way you like. If you only have one size tape on hand, that's completely okay. Use the one size tape. Don't go out and buy extra materials if you don't have to. So what I'm doing is I'm placing three pieces of tape down. Those two tapes on the outside, those are going to stay there. The tapes on, or the piece of tape on the inside, the darker blue, that's going to be removed. So basically everywhere where that tape is placed, that's going to act as a template for now. So underneath that is that white glitter. So you're going to keep that there. So I'm going to add the red in those blank spaces. Again, adding that darker or smaller piece of tape and then adding that thicker piece of tape I'm using that darker piece of tape to get that straight line. I'm also not just placing it like diagonally on the tumbler, if that makes sense. I'm trying to swirl it on the tumbler. 
because you want that candy cane swirl. I didn't like do swirly swirlies, but I did kind of a small swirl just to get that candy cane effect and it wasn't just a diagonal piece of tape placed on the tumbler. And now you'll see that I'm just removing that pieces or those pieces of tape and I'm eyeballing just the space between my lines. Again, all of these lines, they turn out about the same and even if they were a little off, by the time I was finished, you couldn't tell. So if you are looking at this tumbler way too long, whenever you do your tumbler, get up, walk away, go do something else and come back to it because I promise you, even if your lines are like half an inch off, it's going to look great at the end. Do not overthink this process or this step. Just place that piece of tape down, do the swirly whirly, and then just remove that excess tape from either the bottom or the top of the tumbler. I wanted to keep my bottom red, but if you didn't want to keep your bottom red, then you would put a piece of tape on the bottom. You can even put transfer tape or a vinyl, but I wanted to keep my vinyl red or my bottom red. So whenever I spray paint this tumbler, everywhere that you see the white now, that spray paint is going to be painted over red or those areas are going to be painted over with red spray paint. And since I am using spray paint for this, I am going to tape off the inside of my tumbler. You can always use your pop of color paint. You can always use your Mod Podge and acrylic paint mixture. Whatever you have on hand, that's what you um, obviously should use. So I am taping off the inside just so I don't have any overspray on the inside. And then I'm going to take my tumbler outside and spray my tumbler with this Rust-Oleum Apple Red color. This is just the red that I had on hand. It does not matter the specific color red as long as I had a red background because if I don't place all the glitter on those areas, then that red background is going to peek through instead of the white glitter. Right after I sprayed my tumbler, I went right over with Queen of Hearts from Glitter Heart Co. So I am using this spray paint as an adhesive. So I did not let this spray paint dry. I'm going right in with this glitter and I'm adding it to that wet spray paint just so I can speed up the process. If you don't feel comfortable doing this or you feel rushed, that's okay. Go ahead and spray paint your tumbler, let that spray paint dry, and you can always go in with some Mod Podge or whichever other adhesive you have on hand. Now, whenever I go to peel this up, I'm peeling up this tape while the spray paint is still wet. So if you do decide to use Mod Podge, I always like to peel up my paint whenever my adhesive is wet. So if I would do the Mod Podge method, I would peel that paint up right after I apply that glitter while that Mod Podge is wet. Make sure you are taking your time when peeling up this tape. You don't want to peel it up, peel it up too quickly and rip any areas, anything like that. You want these lines to be nice and crisp like how they are. Look how gorgeous that is. And the reason why I wait or don't wait for my tumblers to be dry is because it's less likely to peel and like crackle I should say. So with me peeling up that tape now, it's going to have a more likelihood of that crisp line. Look at the sparkle. <laughs> okay, so now that my glitter's on, go ahead and let that spray paint dry or Mod Podge dry. Once that spray paint's dried after 10 or 15 minutes, I'm going to seal my tumbler. I'm using Krylon Triple Thick Clear Glaze. I usually use my Krylon Crystal Clear Acrylic Coating, but I ran out of that, so this is what I had on hand, and this stuff works just as well. I spray two generous coats of this, so I spray, dry, spray. I spray one coat, let my tumbler dry for about 10 to 15 minutes, and then I spray another coat. I am very serious about keeping this red glitter into its own lines. I don't want this glitter to spread onto the white. So that's why I spray a very generous amount of my triple thick or my acrylic sealer onto my tumbler. And then you let that final coat dry for about 20 minutes before moving on to epoxying. And now to add my epoxy to my tumbler, I mix a total of 20 milliliters of epoxy. That's 10 milliliters part A and 10 milliliters part B, totaling 20 milliliters of epoxy. I am using my facet epoxy once again. So this took about uh, five hours to dry or cure to the touch before moving on to the next step. You don't have to use your facet epoxy. I just have no patience. So use whichever epoxy you have on hand and make sure you're reading your curing and drying instructions because I know they vary for each epoxy brand. And 
once my tumbler's epoxy was nice and cured, you can see how much sparkle still left on that tumbler. I'm going in again with my X-Acto knife. Again, this is done after every epoxy step. So I go in with my X-Acto knife, get rid of all my epoxy, take my 180 grit sanding block, I sand on the rim. And again, I am sanding those little pieces or the little top area to create that small seal to have that tiny, tiny bit of stainless steel exposed. Once I'm finished sanding the rim, I'm going to go in with my 220 grit sanding block and sand around the tumbler just to sand away any of those stubborn glitter pieces that may have poked through the epoxy. And then I'm taking my 91% alcohol and I'm going to wipe down my tumbler once again before adding my decals to my tumbler. For this tumbler, I am using this beautiful emerald green glitter vinyl that I received from the Vinyl Cottage Shop. I absolutely love this. If you go to their website and just search emerald underneath their search bar, you'll find this and they also have this in HTV. I went to Cricut Design Space and I added the shape rectangle and then I shaped the rectangle 0.10 inch times 10 inch. So the reason why I did 10 inches is because my tumbler measured about eight and a half inches. So I wanted a couple inches to play with. So I had more vinyl than less. I'm going to take my rectangles or my stripes and place these stripes in the middle of my white areas. These are the only decals I'm adding to this tumbler because this is made for beginners. So if you wanna add more decals, go ahead and add more decals. These tumblers are made for an inspiration. So I'm sure whatever you come up with and create is going to look beautiful. So a little tip when adding thin vinyl or stripes to a tumbler is I hold my tumbler with my left hand and then with my right hands, I'm adding that vinyl to the tumbler and I'm holding that vinyl very taut. So I'm pulling that vinyl. So that way when I place it on, that vinyl isn't wobbly and it doesn't have like a crooked little line. So the tighter you hold it or pull it, the easier it is to apply and lay nice on your tumbler without having like a squiggly line. Don't pull it too hard to break it or rip it, but get a good like pull on it just so it can get a nice placement, I should say. So now I'm going to go in with my X-Acto knife and I'm cutting the bottom of my stripes and the top of my stripes. Keep in mind, these are at the top and the bottom. So you want that seal and you don't want that bottom to be wobbly. So I'm leaving like the smallest bit of space between the bottom and the stripe and then the top and the stripe, just so I can still have that nice seal and just so that tumbler can still sit uh, straight and it's not wobbly with those vinyl pieces coming past that um, bottom of the tumbler. And here's my tumbler so far. Super, super cute, super easy, right? So now I'm going to go in with my CC DIY Quick Coat. This is a urethane sealer and I apply this to all of my vinyls that I place on my tumbler. This allows that vinyl to adhere to the tumbler. So that way when I add my coat of epoxy, I don't have to worry about that vinyl peeling up. You need a very little amount of this sealer applied to your um, decals. And I have had this bottle for a very long time. So this lasts a long time. I absolutely love this stuff. So after you apply this, you're going to wait about 10 to 15 minutes to allow this to dry before applying your epoxy to your tumbler. And now let's add the coats of epoxy to the tumbler. I used two coats of epoxy, so I epoxied, let that epoxy cure, and then epoxy the final coats. I use a total of 10 milliliters of epoxy for each coat, so I'm using 10 milliliters of epoxy on this round. I'm going to let this tumbler spin, let it cure, and then I'm going to epoxy over the second coat. And this is how I seal my tumbler. If you want to add a cute quote on here or a decal, what I would do is I would still do this coat of epoxy over my stripes. I would use 10 milliliters of epoxy. I would let that cure. I would add my decal and then do a couple more coats over that. The reason why I wouldn't add my decal over the stripes is so that decal wouldn't be bumpy over those stripe areas because y'all know that we love a smooth tumbler so to make it as smooth as possible we'll go ahead and avoid any bumpiness by adding those stripes epoxy and then decal and then epoxy a couple final coats 
And then once this tumbler is completely cured, I'll show you the final results. Okay, just kidding. I'm going to clean up the rim first and then I'm going to show you the final result. Remember, clean up that rim, cut that excess epoxy off of the tumbler, wash the inside of the tumbler with some Dawn dish soap and then add that lid and then I'm going to show you the final result. And here's the final tumbler. Look how gorgeous this tumbler turned out. This is so simply beautiful. That sparkle, I don't know if it's the colors, if it's the sparkle or what, but this tumbler is so elegant and it's so clean. I absolutely love it. If you guys have any questions, leave a comment in my comments below. And don't forget, you can find me on TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. And I'm also trying to reach 100,000 subscribers by January of 2023. So please, if you guys do enjoy my videos and you guys watch all of them or follow me, please don't forget to subscribe because every subscriber counts. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more Tumblr and craft videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see y'all next time.